Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Brief History Of and today we'll be looking at one of the more odd weapons of the Second World War. During periods of war, the evolution of weapons technology goes into overdrive, as the need to have an advantage over the enemy becomes greater. During the Second World War, the accuracy of bombing targets was measured in miles rather than the modern day meters. To hit a target, bomber crews had to either do carpet bombing areas in the hope of getting lucky, or to undertake perilous dive bombing missions. That's excluding the human piloted suicide attacks. Many different methods were attempted in guiding bombs, for example the V1 and V2 bomb, which used pendulums and gyroscopes to stay on course. These however weren't the most accurate at hitting a particular target. The Americans wanted a bomb that could guide itself, similar to a cruise missile of today. Cruise missiles use a combination of GPS, onboard computers and laser systems for guidance, all of which were in their infancy in the 1940s. Well, look at their idea of in-car GPS. And computers were hardly portable at the time. A targeting system like the one we'll be looking at today would never have been given the green light if it wasn't for the Second World War and the need for ever more accurate weapons. Project Pigeon, or Project Orcon as it was later known as, was the brainchild of a noted psychologist and inventor, B.F. Skinner. He had previously used pigeons in his psychological experiments where he had them pulling levers for food. Skinner had pioneered operant conditioning, where the subject is rewarded with a treat for carrying out desired behaviour. It's similar to how you get your dog to sit. 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 Well, apparently. Skinner came up with the concept whilst riding on a train in 1939, after he had learned about the Germans bombing of Warsaw. He watched a flock of birds through the train window flying in formation and wondered if a bird could be used to guide a bomb to a ground target from a plane. He later said, Suddenly I saw them as devices, with excellent vision and extraordinary manoeuvrability. Could they not guide a missile? Was the answer to the problem waiting for me in my own backyard? Skinner bought some pigeons from a poultry store and rewarded them for tapping on a target image. He created a harness that disabled the bird from using its feet and wings but left room for the head and neck to move freely. The tapping of the target, he reasoned, could be translated into signals to guide a bomb. He designed a system where a number of rods attached to the bird could move, closing electrical contacts, driving the hoist on an overhead track. Skinner took the concept to a number of scientific bodies, but unfortunately the idea wasn't taken seriously. It wasn't until 1941, after the attack on Pearl Harbor, that Skinner found some traction for his idea. He designed a nose cone which had three windows and up to three pigeons could be placed inside to guide the missile. Gyros placed in a vacuum were used to increase the force of the bird's pecking to control the device. The pigeons were trained to peck on an image of a target, i.e. a white pyramid or battleship. With each peck on the plate, the nose of the bomb would face the target. The National Defense Committee granted Skinner $25,000, although they were skeptical of the results. After many months of testing, Skinner had formed a squadron of 64 pigeon pilots. Each test got harder and further proved the concept. Each one of his 64 pilots passed the flying school. Remarkably, once the pigeons had been correctly conditioned, they rarely, if ever, missed their target. Even under extreme stress set up by firing a target pistol right next to the bird's heads. Unfortunately for Skinner, in 1944 the plug was pulled on the project, as the government didn't want to divert funds and resources from one of the other secret weapons projects of the time. However, this wasn't the end for Skinner and his pigeon guided bombs. In 1948, the project was revived as the Cold War arms race started to set in. The US Navy thought the concept could be used to target warships, and the experiments were renamed Project Orcon, which stood for Organic Control. The nose cone was refined further, and each bird had a metal contactor attached to their nose that would contact with an electronic conducting glass plate, sending a signal to a number of servos attached to the controls of the missile. Testing over the following five years showed that the birds could hit a target under ideal circumstances, but clouds and shadows could throw the birds off target. Once again, the project was cancelled in 1953 due to electric guidance systems becoming more reliable. The project stayed classified for a further six years. Unfortunately for Skinner, but fortunately for the pigeons, the bird bombs were never used on the battlefield. However, electronic conducting glass was developed to be used in control centers and US warships for many more years to come. Do you think the idea of using a pigeon to guide a missile is a good idea? Uh, leave a comment below. Did you enjoy the video? I hope you did. And if that's the case, 
click on this link if you'd like to see more or just check out new videos every week. If you have any suggestions for new subjects you'd like me to talk about, please feel free to comment below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.